Good morning, fellow Chrome users. This is Greg. I just thought I'd talk a little bit about ARPS this morning, and I'm going to be stumbling a lot of my words, so I apologize. This I've actually started this video three different times, and uh, I tend to ramble. I tend to forget where I'm at. I tend to uh, not understand where I'm going when I'm thinking to my voice to telling people about it, so I apologize for this. But uh, anyway, arpeggiators. <laughs> Arpeggiators are nothing more than patterns uh, with where your fingers are on the, on the keyboard. So if you put down one finger, it's going to play a single note. If you play, put down two, three, four, it's going to be playing that number of notes, depending on the pattern that you've entered. So let's go on into global mode. That's where the patterns are actually stored. The Chrome doesn't care what sound you're using when it comes down to arpeggio patterns. All it really cares about is just what the pattern is. And there's advanced ones that I haven't even gotten into. Um, some people are a lot more advanced than I am. I'm still learning, but I try to share what I'm learning as I'm going along. So that's what I'm doing now. Now, if you take a look at this arpeggio pattern that I've got here, um, I've got it set to down. Let's go ahead and switch it to up. There we go. So there's standard patterns that are built into the Chrome, not the ones that are that are you. If you notice, those ones come with the Chrome as well, the guitar strum, blah blah blah. Um, but the the standardized patterns that have been around since arpeggiators were invented are the first four. So you've got up, down, alt one, alt two, and random. So let's go ahead and select up. If you notice, you've got options. You can go with with octaves, and we'll show that in a minute. Sort. I'm going to turn sort off for now. What do each of these mean? Um, so sort will, when you play your notes, when you put down your fingers, it will play them in the order that you put your fingers down. So for example, if I go uh, one, three, five, that's going to be the order. If I hit one, five, three, it will play them in that one, five, three order. If you turn sort off, it will play them in numerical order so it'll always go one three five one four five latch it'll make it play when you're done when you pick up your fingers when your fingers off of the keyboard it'll keep playing key sync will synchronize it with exactly when you push down the key which is important when you're trying to synchronize with the rest of the band um, there are option there's some, there are times where you don't want it to synchronize with your key i I think I've key synced it every time I've used it. Um, keyboard will play us when you rather than blah, 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 blah. see what I'm talking about. I stumble my words all the time. Um, anyway, it will play the the note exactly as you would normally play it on the keyboard. In addition to the ARP, which can give you some interesting effects. Octave will repeat what you're playing with the next octave up, the next octave up. So. If you want to play two, three, or four octaves, it'll automatically go through, cycle through all of those. And I'll show you that in a second. Finally, resolution. So if you, you've got up here, um, your tempo is based on quarter notes, right? And right now I've got it as a 65 beat, beat per minute. Um, resolution, you can actually have it play faster depending on the actual note that you're playing. And I'll show you that as well. For now, let's go on with the, with the, uh, the default. So I'm going to go ahead and play a C. And I always lose my finger when I'm holding onto the camera. Oh, see, I did it again. Gotta turn the arp on. So, so those notes are playing with a single finger, right? And it's set on latch. So when I pick it up, I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. When I pick up my finger, off the keyboard it continues to play. If I turn the latch off, it's only going to play when, when my finger is down. Um, I like to have the latch on and I'm going to show you why for this particular song in a minute. Um, a minute, more like 10. <laughs> anyway, so let's try multiple fingers, right? So we've got the one. Notice it's going up. Now that's just alternating. Let me play. Da, 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 da. So it's going to go up. One, three, five, one, three, five. One, three, five, one, three, five, C. One, three, five, C. So, and our latch keeps it playing. So if I go in here. Let 
And that's basically it. So that's up. If we go with down, whoops, down, it's going to do the same thing, only down. Now C. Try that again. Now that's a little confusing. Okay, here's another one of my stupid things. I got the sort option backwards. If you turn on sort, it will always play it uh, sequentially. If you turn sort off, then uh, it will play it in the order that you push your fingers down. And that's why it was doing that, that strange thing. And not playing them in order because that's how I put my fingers down. All right. So anyway, so those are those options. If we, let's turn sort on. Let's change the type of note we're using. Let's go ahead and select a 16th note. Ah, so every time you, may, every time you, you select an option uh, in the arpeggiator, the global arpeggiator settings, um, it turns off the arpeggiator. That's so annoying. So that's sixteenths. Let's go with eighth notes. All right. So anyway, so that's how you set set up the automated settings. There's other ones as well. There are alternating. Ah. That's Alt two. Let's go ahead and switch it to random. All right, so that's that's the the automated uh, the the built-in ones. Um, you can also set up user ones. So if you've probably poked around, prodded on these, these are <laughs> like I said. There's a lot more uh, advanced ones that I've even played with. which make no sense whatsoever when you're out of context, right? So these were created for individual patches and, and you know, that the, 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 the Chrome has. Uh, with these built-in ones, you just got to play around and figure out what you're going to do with them. These are likely, uh, it's called guitar strum. It's probably set on a guitar sound in the Chrome so that you have an accompaniment uh, while you can play something else. I haven't even delved into them. There's so much in the Chrome that I haven't even used. Um, oh, and that's another thing too. You've got your arpeggiator select here. So as you know, the Chrome has two arpeggiators built into it. So you can have two arpeggios, two arpeggiators in one uh, one combi or one sequence. And I'll, I'll show you that as well. I'm going to show you all this stuff. And like I said, we're going to end up with a long video. So look at that. We're eight minutes, 45 seconds in already. All right. So that is the global settings. But w how do you get it to play? Um, so I wanted to show this to you. Um, if you notice, there's tabs here. Um, but there's here's where it can be a little bit confusing. You've got ARP, ARP, and then you've also got uh, the arpeggiator drum track section. What we want to do is want to go to this section. This, is, this will list every single one of your sounds that are in the combi. And a and B. So you can turn the A arpeggiator or the B arpeggiator on or off on any given sound. Um, so if you notice, I've got the A arpeggiator set on sound 5 and the B arpeggiator set on uh, sound 7. Those have to be on or else you're not going to be getting a sound when your arp is turned on. Additionally, you've got a scan zone for the arpeggiator, which is separate from the scan zone from your normal keys. This is important. You can do tricks based on where the arpeggiator triggers. And in this particular combi, I've got it set up on my, uh, on my B 
arpeggiator, where the uh, the range for the arpeggiator is completely different from the range of the sound. The sound itself only plays on one key, but the arpeggiator is triggered for about four keys. And the reason for that is because you can turn the arpeggiator on and off with a key without sounding the arpeggiator. So it's it's just a toggle, right? So you can be playing normally and turn the arpeggiator on and off without it actually affecting the sound. And you'll see that in this particular combi. You gotta play with it. That's the biggest key. Play around, see with, get creative with it. I mean, figure out how you're gonna be playing them. So, as you may have noticed, this is for Steve Perry's O'Sherry. Now, the intro to O'Sherry, it was sequenced originally um, on whatever sequencer they had in 1986. Um, it was a lot less advanced than our sequencers are now. I could take O'Sherry and I could totally just record it with the Chrome's uh, sequencer and then just play it back, um, which would be perfectly valid, I suppose, but I wouldn't actually be playing it live, and I prefer to play something. So does my band. So that's why I set it up as arpeggiators. Um, so I'm playing, basically the way I've got this set up is I play the lead line while triggering and non and untriggering the arpeggiator, it's a little complicated, um, and I've got uh, I've got it set up also with different velocities for triggers and, and that sort of thing. And I'll play it at the end of the video. But for now, um, so the arpeggiator A is uh, is one pattern. Arpeggiator B is the second pattern. Um, and then if you go to the arpeggiator tabs here. Because I was in the global settings and I had selected that guitar strum, it's now changed it. I love it. Actually, it's that it does that to make it easier. So when you've edited a globe, edited a, an ARP, um, it will automatically be there when you go back. But this time it was annoying. So um, how did that happen? <laughs> ARP A, ARP two. Oh, that's kind of stupid. I'll have to fix that. Okay. Now we're in, we're still in the global settings. If we take a look at O Sherry ARP A, what I've got is the high resolution on there, mainly because my tempo is a 65. The tempo is down to 65 because of arpeggiator B. <laughs> so let's take a look deeper in that. So um, we, we go into, oh, I got to go back to global settings to edit the pattern. So we'll go to the pattern settings. Um, here we are. So if you take a look at this, it goes fingers uh, it, it goes as a pattern one three five three five three. So when we play it, got to turn it on. It's just like that. So it's one three five three five one three five three five one three five three five, right? And it's latched. I can play it. just like that. Um, so if you're familiar with the song O'Sherry, that plays throughout the, the background of the intro. And I've probably got the pattern wrong. Um, here. Let's go ahead and edit the pattern on the fly so you can see. If I turn this off, it skips that. Right? Now if I add one, you're not going to notice anything because that's set as multiple fingers. You can do weird things. If you notice, I had three fingers pushed down and it's going to play all three notes at once there. Um, so that's... So that's a pretty simple arp there. There are also other options. Gate legato. Um, that's going to be how, how smoothly it's going to be playing it, right? Gate. And I think I think some of these it doesn't change until you turn it off and then back on again. So let's try this. Turn that down. And see, I'm not even seeing a difference in that. But I want to play in legato, so I change it to legato. And every one of the, the notes, I want them set to velocity 127. Unfortunately, what also plays havoc with these is uh, the velocity settings for your sound as well. So even though I've got it set to 127, if I lightly play it, Actually, 
yeah, the way I've got my, my combi set for triggering, if you lightly play it, you don't hear anything. If I hit it harder, if you notice, I turned it off by lightly playing it. Um, that's part of it. So in playing this, I can turn it off by lightly hitting the keys and then they go away. Um, and you'll see that later. Um, anyway, so that is the, uh, the arpe for O'Sherry. So let's go click OK. Let's select arpeggiator. I'm sorry, the second one. Oh, I love it. I love it. Arpeggiator B. There we go. This is O'Sherry B, as I've labeled too. Very simple. But if you notice, it's a key sync. It's also a latch. Um, when I play this back, I've got it actually triggered on, on my other keyboard, so it's down here. And when I play, oh, now see, I turn my ARP off. Let's try that again. Oh, lovely. What did I do wrong? Let's go back to our sound here. Whoops. Go into... I think I soloed the wrong one. There we go. That's what it was. I had soloed the wrong one. Okay. Let's try that again. Turn the ARP on. Let's go back to uh, global ARP patterns. There we are. There's our pattern. So if I hit this... Ah, I did it again. What's going on here? You know what? I know why it's doing that. I apologize to everybody. My other sound, I required it to be transposed down. <laughs> And I've got the keyboard transposed two steps down. So it, it I'm, yeah, the, the Chrome doesn't like to be uh, transposed when you've got ARPs. The ARPs do not transpose with the rest of the sounds. It's actually transposing the keys themselves. So for example, if I've got a program to trigger with this particular key, um, if I have it two steps down, it's actually going to trigger with this key, even if it plays that sound. It's, ah, yeah, yeah, I play around with the Chrome. If you don't play around with it enough, you're not gonna figure these things out. So, back on the ARPs. Now when I hit that key, and then now, remember I explained you can turn it off with another key without it actually playing, that's what I do there. So anyway, so it's very simple, it doesn't even move. So it's triggered with one key, and it doesn't move anywhere else. If I play around it, it doesn't care, it doesn't care. If I play this one hard, boom, it goes away. All right, so the key's here, right? You can also uh, set individual settings for your, for your ARPs uh, in a combi. That's what these are set up. They, when you change the settings here, it doesn't affect the saved pattern that's in uh, the global settings, which is important. So you could actually have uh, a pattern that you're using in one combi that has different settings in the other combi because you don't have it hard hard saved. So I'm 19 minutes into this video. How about that? Um, so I hope I've covered everything that you wanted to know. <laughs> There's still a whole lot more here and I'm, I'm really, oh, I didn't show octaves. That's, that's one thing I didn't show. So check this out. Um, so we've got this, this harp here that I showed you. If I change it to multiple octaves, it goes two octaves three octaves, four octaves. Yeah, that goes a little bit high because it doesn't start it doesn't start out very low. but uh, some of those songs that were that were made in the 80s, uh, they, they did that quite a bit. So all right, well, that's this. Um, so when I come back, I'm gonna go ahead and just play O'Sherry. Oh, um, I've practiced it, but I probably need to practice it more and uh, you can see exactly what I did with that. It's, it's a little tricky, but uh, anyway, 
Hey guys, I just realized that I didn't uh, show you the ARP for Feels Like the First Time, which I played earlier. Remember this? Right, so um, this is set as a fixed note ARP. Um, so if you notice in the global settings under uh, uh, arpeggio tone mode instead of normal, it's set to uh, fixed note key sync, and it's not latched, so I play it, it goes, I let go, it stops playing. Um, at any rate, so you hit setup, that's the setup the actual notes themselves. In this particular ARP I only use three, F5, C6, and F6. In my Chrome 73 it starts with C1, right? So uh, F5 would be C, D, E, F, F1, 2, 3, 4, so it starts there, and then it plays C6, which is going to be here, and F6, which is here. So, um, all right, so those are the, the actual notes it's played. If you take a look at the pattern itself, right, it plays F5, C6, F6, C6, F5, C6. I actually, I actually got that uh, from another YouTube video where somebody had performed feels like the first time and actually said what the notes were, which saved me a little bit of time. I mean, it would have been easy to slow down the, the song to hear what the notes were, you know, but... Uh, it was one of the first ones I did, and it made it easier for me. So, anyway, I wanted to show you the uh, the fixed note ARPs. In the Korg manual, the Chrome manual, it tells you that uh, the primary use for these are patterns, B patterns, um, which is one way. But like I said, you've got to look things at, look at the Chrome, you've got to play around with it, and you've got to figure out exactly what you want to do with it and how it's going to serve you because ultimately you're the person ultimately you're the person who's going to be doing it and you can have people create things for you all day long it's probably not going to be the best thing for you because your fingers are your fingers my fingers are my fingers and your brain is your brain we all operate at different levels and we all operate you know, we, we, it's not bad or it's not good. We all operate differently. I may do something in a roundabout way that you're like, no, 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 this is the easier way to do it. Fine, do it your way, you know. Um, anyway, that feels like the first time. Let's play O'Sherry. <laughs> 